Welcome back to this special broadcast on the run uh, on uh, I-24 News, excuse me. Uh, day 178 of Israel's war against Hamas. We are going to shift focus away from Israel for a moment and on to Turkey and a series of local elections there whose results uh, may yet have a profound influence, not just on that country itself, but the region as a whole, perhaps including Israel. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his Islamist AK party suffered its biggest political setback in decades after the incumbent Istanbul mayor, Ikram Imoğlu, and his secular CHP party won a series of municipal votes, including in Ankara. Now, here are both of those men reacting to the election results. The nation itself gives the order and the instructions, not just one person. Officials receive instructions from the nation. Period of one-man rule is over as of today. It is done. The Republican democracy to go full speed ahead from now on. We will open-heartedly analyze the results of the March 31st elections within our party and make our self-criticisms boldly. Although not finalized yet, the election results show us that we are experiencing a loss of ground in local administrations across the country. Of course, we will discuss the reasons for this decline we see on the local basis. And joining us in studio now is Dr. Haye Tankon Yanorocek, an expert on Turkey at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. And uh, Haye, first of all, maybe just explain uh, why this is such a blow. These are local elections, municipal elections are such a political blow to Erdogan. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to emphasize that uh, only 47 years ago, the Republican People's Party became victorious in, a, in an election campaign in Turkey. So this is the second time after 47 years that the secular party gaining something very concrete. And also, of course, you, you mentioned the fact that this is a local elections, this is not a general elections, but in Turkey, the local elections are considered as a rehearsal uh, for the general elections, okay? It is kind of an exam, it is kind of a, a you know, public approval test. And uh, therefore, when, uh, when the presidents, uh, the ruling party, uh, cannot acquire the necessary uh, uh, power uh, at the key provinces, such as Istanbul, Ankara, and Izmir, statistically, uh, the Turkish historical, the, the Turkish political history shows us uh, that they will be defeated at the end. So uh, this should ring the alarm bells at the head. So the beginning of the Erdogan has, has already said that I believe this is his last term as president. He may go back on it, uh, but obviously he maybe wants to. It? Uh, or I'm not, he's I'm not buying it. Or he's setting the why. stage, I believe, for uh, one of his sons to take his place. But no, no, the, no. the beginning of the end I, for Erdogan. I, I, do, I really, frankly, do not think that his sons uh, are uh, are going to replace him. Okay. But uh, first of all. I would like to divert your attention to the Turkish constitution. Yes, indeed, this is on paper his last term, but the same constitution is also paving his way for another term if he will declare snap elections. And definitely he will declare a snap election. No worries, Khalif. He will be with us for many more years. All right, so the question is, uh, how? of course, uh, within Israel, it's always uh, uh, his attitude, the concern, especially the hostility he's had toward Israel since October mm -hmm. 7th. Is this kind of defeat domestically mm -hmm. going to have any impact on, for example, his foreign policy, including uh, uh, how he uh, relates to Israel? I uh, sincerely do not believe that we will see any, uh, you know, changes. For instance, last night, when the first results be, uh, began to appear on the screens, what did he do? He called the Iranian president, uh, Raisi, to speak about Gaza. And he tried to divert the public attention once again uh, to Gaza. And regarding the Turkish secular party, for instance, the Republican People's Party, do you think that they are lovers of Zion? Mm -hmm. Not really. Uh, in order to uh, push Erdogan further, they... Uh, insist to cut the trade ties uh, with Israel. Okay, so uh, Erdogan is acting more and more pragmatic. So it is, we, we cannot speak something like black and white. We have 50 shades of gray. And uh, at the end, also, you know, only because Israeli government and Erdogan, uh, they cannot agree, uh, you know, automatically we may not make any choice from now that, okay, the other government will be 
uh, better for Israel. Unfortunately, we cannot say such a thing. Why? Because at the end of the day, the Republican People's Party, it, it is not considered as an anti-Semitic or, or an anti-Zionist party. But the problem with that party is, with whom are they going to shape this coalition government? There are right. some other very anti-Israel, very anti-Semitic uh, uh, political partners that they are collaborating. Uh, for instance, the Felicity Party, for, right. for instance, the Future Party. And these are very problematic uh, political actors. Again, it would be very much challenging. But at the end, if we are going to look from a Western point of view, of course, the Republican People's Party, uh, you know, you should want right. uh, that, that that party would replace everyone. Right. We've Definitely. written the political or the semi-political, the, the political obituaries of, of Rajiv type or the one in the yeah. past. We'll have to see if he survives this uh, current blow. Uh, Hi, Eitan Konrad, Yana Rocek, thank you.